Okay, and we're live. Um, so I'm going to start off with our last problem from uh, the previous day. Um, that was um, under useful integration techniques, if you're on WeChat, um, if the video lags out or you can't see, you can always load the PDFs there. Um, so this was an example where we were solving for x in terms of u. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit to this uh, for the notes. Um, just so I can show all of my steps. So what I have here, um, I'm integrating 2x minus 5 to the fourth power times 4x dx. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to try my u substitution, which we got down here. So if u is equal to 2x minus 5, um, then u prime is equal to 2 dx. Um, I'm actually going to solve for dx so that we can substitute for it later. Um, so I'm going to add a line here. Um, dx is equal to u prime divided by 2. Okay. <coughs> um, I'm also going to solve for x. Um, so if u is equal to 2x minus 5, that means u plus 5 divided by 2 should be equal to x. Okay, so now I can make my substitutions. Um, I want everything to be in terms of u. So I'm going to take our u plus 5 divided by 2 and substitute that for x. I'm going to take my u prime divided by 2 and we'll substitute that for dx. Um, so that should leave us with what we have down here. <coughs> um, my 4 and my 2 will cancel on the bottom, so that leaves me with 2 times the x, um, or 2 times u plus 5. Um, <coughs> and I've also got a 2 and a 2 here, so after I substitute, those two will cancel as well. Okay, so that leaves me with this on bottom. Um, u to the fourth power times u plus 5 times u prime should be equal to our original problem. Okay, any questions on our substitutions? Uh, uh, no. Uh, I'm fine. <clears throat> okay, that was a little bit tricky, <clears throat> but um, our key here is that everything is in terms of u now. Um, we don't want to mix our variables, so I can't leave a, I can't leave everything in terms of u and have a dx. Um, if everything's in terms of u, then my derivative also has to be in terms of u. Um, okay, so because everything is in terms of u now, we can distribute. Um, so that's my next step. Um, after I distribute this, um, I'll have u to the fifth power plus 5u to the fourth power um, du. Um, so when I integrate, I'll add 1 to the power and divide by the new power for each of these terms. Now, integration is really just addition. Um, so that means I can do each of these terms separately. So u to the fifth power will become u to the sixth over six. And then my next term, five u to the fourth power, will become five u to the fifth power over five, but my fives can cancel. So I'm left with u to the six over six plus u to the five plus c. Okay, then I can go back and make my substitution. So we know that um, u is equal to two x minus five from this step up here. Um, so if I go back and I resubstitute for that, if u is 2x <coughs> minus 5, then my final answer will be 2x minus 5 to the 6th power over 6, plus 2x minus 5 to the 5th power, plus c. Um, any questions on what we did? Um, so we divide um, the u prime, but um, <coughs> um, aren't we supposed to also times 2 um, along the way because um, because to um, to divide by um, dx fully, we have to also also times 2. Um, okay, so our um, way up here in our first step, our u prime was 2 dx. Um, so once we've substituted, once we've changed our dx in terms of u, if I substitute u prime as 2 dx, um, then my original problem will be I'll pull 2 out of this 4x. Um, so I'll have this whole term will become 2 times x times 2 dx. This 2 dx is really my u prime. So once I've done that substitution, we've already substituted for the 2.
Is Brendan? Yes. On the bot, on the final part, it's just basically the substitution for U and U prime, right? Um, it's a substitution for U. So um, any time that we are integrating, we're going to lose our um, derivative of the variable because of chain rule. So um, when you are deriving, you would multiply by the power, decrease the power by one, and then multiply by the derivative of your inside function. Um, so for us, the derivative of the inside function is U prime. So if I'm working backwards um, on this step when I integrate, um, in order to integrate this, I would divide by U prime, which will cancel my U primes. Then uh -huh. I'll add one to every <coughs> power, and then divide by the new power. <coughs> so that okay. would undo our chain rule for integration. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Nathan, are you okay with our substitution for U prime? Um, yes. Okay. Uh, I think the problem, just looking at the work that you sent me, was um, we still had those mixed variables in your work where you had substituted for u, but you had a dx left. Um, oh, okay. I'll have to take a look at it again after this. I don't have the work in front of me, but I think that was it. <laughs> um, let me try one more of these um, that I don't already have worked out. So um, this is... Solving for x in terms of u. I believe I have more of those in our practice sheets. Let me go find one. Zoom out of here a bit. Solving for x in terms of u. Um, okay, I've got one more here that's already worked out. Um, so let me talk through the one I already have worked out, and then we'll work on a completely new one together. Um, so for this, um, we are um, on number 15 in the student packet. <coughs> um, integrating 3x minus 5 to the 1 third power times 2x dx. So I'm going to try to make a u substitution. Um, a u will be everything that's in the inside function, um, which has to be this part of the function that's, um, that's underneath the cubed root. If I'm raising something to the 1 third power, that's a cubed root. Um, so if u is 3x minus 5, then the derivative of my inside function, my u prime, should have been 3 times dx, um, which is not the right power that we had. Originally I had 2x dx, um, so I don't have an x in my u prime. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this equation we have right here, u is equal to 3x minus 5, for x, and I'll be able to resubstitute for x um, in terms of u. So if I do, I'll add 5 to both sides, that's u plus 5, and then divide by 3 to get x is equal to u plus 5 divided by 3. Now I can substitute. This u plus 5 divided by 3 should go in where x is. My u should go in where 3x minus 5 is. And my dx, um, if u prime is equal to 3dx, then my dx should be u prime divided by 3. So I can substitute for dx as u prime divided by 3. So I make all of those substitutions. Um, I've got 2 as a constant, which I pulled out of the integral. Um, my 3x minus 5 is u, so that's u to the 1 third power. Um, I have x, which is u plus 5 di um, divided by 3. <coughs> and dx, which is u prime divided by 3. OK, so if I simplify, um, I'm going to multiply all of this together, which means I'm going to end up with a fraction that has a 9 on bottom. So I just pulled out that constant 9. 3 times 3 is 9. I pulled it outside the integral. Um, we can do that with any constant. Um, so that left me with u to the 1 third power times u. I can add my uh, exponents. So that's 1 third plus 1 is 4 thirds. Um, and u to the 1 third times 5 is 5u to the 1 third times u prime. Okay, then I'm ready to integrate from this step. Um, so if I integrate, I'll add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. So for the first term, I had u to the 4 thirds. When I add 1 to the power, I'll have u to the 7 thirds. Um, if I divide by 7 thirds, that's the same as multiplying by 3 over 7. <coughs> um, if you're dividing by a fraction, you can flip and multiply. So that gives me 3 over 7 times u to the 7 thirds. Plus, I had a 5 on the outside here. Um, so this would become... Um, 5u to the 4 thirds power times 3 fourths, but 5 times 3 is 15. Um, plus c because we had a constant of integration. 
and then I need to multiply by the two ninths. Um, now, um, I'm going to distribute the two ninths into everything that was inside the integral, everything we just integrated. So I would be multiplying by this plus c as well, but because c is a constant, um, if you multiply a constant by a constant, you're still going to get a constant. Um, so this is still going to be some unknown constant here, and we don't really need to worry about multiplying by the constant multiple. Okay, so if I multiply these out, I've got um, a 3 and a 3 can cancel, so that leaves me with 2 times uh, two over 3 times 7 is 2 over 21 for the first term. Um, then I can start canceling with my 15 and the 9, so I can cancel a 3 from both of those, and I can cancel <coughs> the 4 and the 2. Um, so that leaves me with just a 5 on top, um, and then a 2 times 3 on bottom is 6. Um, any questions for 15? Nope. Um, if I wanted to get this back in terms of x, my last step would be to resubstitute for u. So my final answer would look something like this. Um, 2 times 3x minus 5 to the 7 thirds power over 21 plus 5 times 3x minus 5 to the 4 thirds power over 6 plus c. Okay, um, let's go ahead and try one together. Um, I'm just going to jump over to this next one here for 16. Um, again, if you can't see, I've got, um, I've got this one in the student packet. So we're on number 16. Um, this is the integral of 3x times all of 4x minus 5 to the fourth power, dx. Um, so let me start off with Hong In. Um, Hong Yan, what is my u? What is the inside part of this function, do you think? The, the inside part, 4x minus 5. Okay, perfect. 4x minus 5. No. Um, so then, what would my derivative of u be? Uh, 4. Uh, okay, 4, but um, we, um, we're going to change our variables. <coughs> so if I derive x, what should I get? Uh, dx. DX, dx, perfect. Right. So this is 4dx. Okay, um, I don't have the 4dx on the outside. I have 3x dx. Um, so I'm going to try to rewrite x in terms of u um, using this form right here. Um, so if I do, um, what else do I have here? I have Nathan and Vivian. So uh, Nathan, what's going to happen if I um, solve for x? Can you say it again? Uh, what will happen if I solve for x? Um, um, x, x equals u plus 5 over 4. Perfect. x equals u plus 5 over 4. So we got that from um, this equation here, um, if I solve for x. Okay, now I'm going to use this equation here for my um, derivative of u to solve for dx. And then I'll be able to substitute for dx into here, um, and for x, and for 4x minus 5 is equal to u. Um, so I'll get rid of all of my x's. Okay, so if I solve for dx, this will be dx is equal to du over 4. Um, any questions on what we've done so far? No. No. Okay. Um, so I'm going to make my substitutions. Um, let me highlight here. Um, I have... Ooh. That's not a highlight. <laughs> Let's try that again. Nope. Okay, I guess I can't do that. Um, so let me do this in a different color then. Um, I'm going to resubstitute for you. So this is all you. Um, I have my dx, which is du over 4, and <coughs> I have an x here, which I'll substitute for u plus 5 over 4. Okay, so that gives us this. Um, I have this constant 3, which I'm going to pull outside the integral, so this is 3 times the integral of. I'll substitute for x, um, so that's u plus 5 over 4. 
I'll substitute for 4x minus 5. Um, so that's u to the fourth power. And then I'll substitute for dx. Um, so if I substitute for dx, that's du over 4. Okay, any questions on our substitution so far? No. No. Ms. Random. Uh, Hogan? Uh, do you always move the 3 to the left side? Um, I'm going to try to pull out all the constants because that makes my integration a little bit easier. So as long as you don't have a variable um, and you can pull it out of every term, then you can pull it outside the integral. Okay. Okay, so I actually have, I've got more stuff that I can pull outside the integral right now. Um, what other constants do I have that I could pull outside? Um, four. Uh, one over four. Okay, I could pull out one over four. That would leave me with uh, 3 over 4 times the integral of u plus 5 times u to the 4th power times du over 4. I've got one more I could pull out. Um, Hongan, do you see any other constants that I'm multiplying through by everything that I can pull out? Okay, maybe not. So, <coughs> um, I have another over 4 here that I could also pull out. Um, so if I pull that out, this will be 3 over 16 times the integral of u plus 5 times u to the 4th power du. Um, okay, Nathan, what's my next step? Um, distribute um, the u and uh, u plus 5. Okay, so what would that leave us with inside? Um, equals u to the 5th power plus 5 times u to the 4th power times du. Perfect. <clears throat> um, Hongyan, what will happen if I integrate? Oh. Okay, I think we just lost Hongyan. <laughs> Let me see if I can re-add them. Uh, Ethan, I've got Sam with us now. Um, mm -hmm. Sam, can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Um, okay. <coughs> uh, Hong Yun's telling me he has a connection issue, so I've re-invited him. If he's able to connect, he'll come back in. Um, okay, so Hello. last thing I need to do is integrate these terms. Um, so if I integrate um, u to the fifth power, what will happen? Um, I think I'm going to rely on Nathan for a minute because we have everyone else that just jumped in halfway through. <laughs> Um, so, Nathan, what's going to happen if I integrate this? Uh, um, 1 over 6 times u to the 6th power. Okay, perfect. So that's u to the 6 over 6 plus... Um, um, 1 over... Oh, just um, u, u to the 5th power. Perfect. u to the 5th power. That would have been 5 u to the 5th over 5, but those 5s can cancel. Um, and then plus c. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is distribute, um, and then we'll resubstitute for u. Um, so I'm going to distribute first. Um, this three and the six t uh, the three and the six can cancel, so that'll leave me with u to the sixth over sixteen times two um, plus three u to the fifth power over sixteen plus c. Um, and my last step is to resubstitute for u. Um, we know that u is equal to 4x minus 5. Um, so if I go make that substitution, my uh, final answer should be 4x minus 5 to the 6th power over 32 plus 3 times 4x minus 5 to the 5th power oops, to the 5th power 
over 16. Okay, zoom back out. Um, any questions on what we did there? Mr. Brandon, do we have to distribute the last part? Uh, yes, so we we distributed that 3 over 16 um, into all of our terms. Um, when we multiply uh, like 3 the, over 16... Like the 4x minus 5 to the 6th power, like, do we have to solve that? We don't have to, right? Um, okay, I'm trying to find you. The 4x minus 5 to the 6th... Uh, oh, the last part. Yes. Oh, okay, you don't have to expand that, no. Oh, okay, okay. Um, usually it's better to leave these in factored form. Um, a lot of times when we're working with derivatives or integrals, um, we'll be wanting to, um, like for our derivatives, we'll be wanting to set it equal to zero in order to figure out where our minimums and maximums are. And that's easier to do if we're in factored form, actually. So um, a lot mm -hmm. of times these are easier to work with if we leave it in factored form. Okay. That's a good question. Okay, um, I think I'm going to look at a couple other techniques while we're here. Um, so I'm going to jump back into our examples. Okay, so we just did solving for x in terms of u. Um, I want to look at I'm gonna look at long division first. Um, so everyone's pretty good on u substitution. And then we've got time and later we'll come back to some um, some harder u substitution ones. Um, so any time that you have um, a power that's greater in the numerator than the than in the denominator, so if your power is bigger on top than on bottom, um, we'll have to divide it out. Um, so the way that we do this is with long division. Um, so for long division, I'm going to um, I'm going to divide the numerator by the denominator. Um, so it'll look like this. Um, x squared can go into x cubed x number of times. Um, so I'm going to multiply x times x squared is x cubed, and then x times one is x. Okay, if I subtract. Um, that'll leave me with x cubed minus x cubed is 0. Um, and 0 minus x is negative x. Um, negative x is too small for x squared, so I'm going to leave this term as my remainder. Um, so that will go up here. Um, as negative x divided by whatever you had on bottom. So that's whatever you had here for the bottom of your fraction or negative x divided by x squared plus 1. Um, so this is the same process that you do with long division um, if you're working with actual numbers. Um, so for instance, if I wanted to divide, um, let's do some random numbers here. I'm going to divide, uh, we'll say, 161. Um, by four. Okay, the first thing I would do is I was look I would look at this term. Um, so my first number is one. Four cannot go into one. Um, so I'm gonna put a one down. Um, then I'll bring down my next term, six. Four does go into sixteen four times. Four times four is sixteen. So if I subtract the sixteen, I've got zero. Then I'll bring down the one. Um, four does not go into one, so I'm left with plus 1 over 4. Um, oops. Just made a mistake, didn't I? <coughs> Let me go back. Alright, I had 4 goes into 16, 16 times, if I subtract that, I'll go down, I've got 0. Um, 4 does not go into 0, I'll pull down the 1. Um, and then um, 4 does not go into 1 at all, so I'm left with 1 fourth as my remainder. Um, I've just done the same thing that we did here for our numbers um, with our long division with polynomials. Okay. Okay. Um, so same idea here. Um, x squared plus one goes into x cubed x amount of times. If I multiply that through by my number, I'll get x cubed plus x because x times x squared plus one is x cubed plus x. Then I have to subtract by everything I had up top. x cubed minus x cubed is zero. A zero minus x is negative x. 
I can't, um, there's nothing I can multiply this by, um, that's not a fraction in order to get x squared plus 1, um, so I'm left with negative x divided by x squared plus 1 is my remainder. Um, any questions on long division in general? Uh, no. 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 Okay. Um, so the way that we're going to use this um, is to allow us to integrate functions. Um, so if we use long division first, that leaves us with an easy part to integrate for just x um, plus another term that we can use any of our other techniques to figure out how to integrate. Um, so for this one, um, now that I know that my original problem, x cubed plus 1 over x squared, is equal to x plus negative x over x squared plus 1, um, I can integrate this instead, and it should give me my answer for the integral of x cubed over 1 plus x squared. Um, so if I integrate, um, because I'm adding, I can split this up into two separate integrals. So I've got the integral of x plus the integral of negative x over x squared plus 1. Um, if I try to do a u substitution for this, um, my u would be equal to x squared plus 1, and then my u prime then would be equal to 2x. Um, I don't have 2x on top, I have negative x. Um, so what I'm going to do is, um, if I multiply this negative x um, by negative 1 over 2, um, I'll be able to have a 2x on top and not change my answer. Um, negative 1 half times 2, um, my 2's would cancel, I would be left with negative x on top. So I have not changed my answer, but I do have a 2x. So now if I pull out this negative 1 half, I'll have u prime over u for my function, which I can integrate directly. Okay, any questions on what we've done for a u sub? No. No. Okay. Um, so if this is just, if this integral is just the integral of u prime over u, when I integrate u prime over u, what will I get? Um, Sam. Um, integral of u. Oh, no. Um, x. What? What? What would I divide in order to get 1 over x? Or what would I derive in order to get 1 over x? Um, I'm not sure. Not sure. Um, we have a friend help us out. Um, ln. Right, uh, natural log of x. I heard it from someone. <laughs> um, so if I derive the natural log of x, we get 1 over x. Um, so Sam, back to you. Um, so what would I have to derive in order to get u prime over u? I'll derive ln, uh, ln u. Perfect. Um, so if I integrate u prime over u, I should get the natural log of u. Yep. Okay, so that means I have this left, the integral of x minus 1 half of u prime over u. Um, if I integrate u prime over u, I get the natural log of u. So this is the integral of x is x squared over 2 minus 1 half times the natural log of u plus c. And then I can resubstitute for u. Um, u is equal to x squared plus 1. Um, so I have x squared over 2 minus 1 half natural log of x squared plus 1 plus c. Um, any questions on our example problem? Let me zoom out so we can see the whole thing. No. Mm, no. Okay. Um, let me look at another one of these, um, and we'll try it together. Um, on your student note sheet, I had a couple additions for today. Uh, if you scroll down all the way to the bottom of the new student note sheet, I have a couple for uh, long division. Um, so those are here. Um, so our first one is um, the integral of x squared plus 7 over x plus 1. Um, so because my power is bigger on top than on bottom, I know that I have to do a long division problem here. Um, so I'm going to divide x squared plus 7, my numerator, by x plus 1, my denominator. Um, so what would I have to multiply um, this x by in order to get x squared? 
Uh, X. 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 Okay, so if I multiply um, X plus 1 times X, I'll get X squared plus X. Okay, so then I'm going to subtract X squared plus X from X squared plus 7. So if I subtract all of this from X squared plus 7, I'll get negative X. Okay, I'm not quite ready to bring down the plus 7 yet, so we uh, still have a larger term here. So I'm going to leave the plus 7 on top for now. Um, actually, I can pull it down. Okay, so what would I have to multiply x by in order to get negative x? Negative 1. Okay, if I multiply by negative 1, I'll get negative x minus 1. Negative x minus 1. Um, so if I subtract from what we have left so far. Uh, negative x plus x is 0. 7 plus 1 is 8. So I have a remainder of 8. Um, so I'm going to leave my remainder here as a fraction. 8 divided by x plus 1. Okay, any questions so far on our long division? No. 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 Okay. Um, so with that, um, my integral of x squared plus 7 over x plus 1 should be equal to um, the integral of x minus 1 plus 8 over x minus 1. Okay, the integral of x minus 1 is, um, is easy. I can just do each one of these terms individually. Because I'm adding, I can split this up into separate integrals. This is really the integral of x... Uh, minus the integral of 1 in terms of x, um, plus 8 times the integral of 1 in terms of x again, x minus 1. Um, okay, I really have a dx on this one as well, dx. Okay, if I'm in terms of x, then the derivative of x will be 1. Um, so we didn't have to write it up here initially, but I'm going to write it because we had it in our original problem. Um, okay. Um, so these ones we can integrate. Uh, the only one that's giving me uh, trouble possibly is my last one. Um, for my last one, I would probably do a u substitution here, so u is equal to x minus 1. If u is x minus 1, then what is my derivative of u? 1. Okay, um, 1, and then I just derived x, so that's 1 dx. dx. Perfect. <coughs> okay, I do have dx on top, um, and I do have u on bottom, so I can substitute directly for that last integral. So this is the integral of x in terms of x minus the integral of 1 in terms of x plus 8 times the integral of du over u in terms of u. Um, what happens if I integrate u prime over u? Um, Sam again. Um. Ellen. Right, natural log of u. Um, yes. So this will be, if I integrate x, I'll get x squared over 2. If I integrate 1 in terms of x, then I'll get x. And Sam told us if I integrate u prime over u, I'll get the natural log of u plus c. Um, so last step, um, actually, okay, I didn't do anything wrong, but I'm going to squeeze this plus c in here so that we have room for the, um, the other problem on this right-hand side. Um, so my last step is going to be to resubstitute for u. Our u is x minus 1. Um, so my final answer is x squared over 2 minus x plus 8 times the natural log of x minus 1 plus c. Um, now I do have absolute values in my natural log. Um, if you put parentheses, you're not wrong, but an, um, any logarithm cannot be negative. So if you end up with a natural log, you can't plug in a negative number, otherwise you are undefined. Um, so if you want to put absolute values in, just to show that you can't plug in a negative there, you can. Um, on your 
AP exam for the multiple choices, sometimes they'll have absolute value signs there. That's why, because um, you can't take the natural, uh, you can't take a logarithm of any base of a negative number. Um, any questions on this one? No. Um, so we are not required to put an <coughs> absolute value sign, right? Uh, they will not count off um, if you put parentheses there, or at least they haven't in the past um, from the scoring guides that I've seen. Okay. Um, but <coughs> really, there there's natural or there's absolute value signs there because we can't take a natural log of a negative number. Um, I usually don't when I'm writing, um, partly because um, when we do our separable differential equations, we solve for c. Um, sometimes we can use property of logarithms to pull that out, um, and so it's okay for our number in there to look negative until we get to the final answer because the numbers you'll be plugging in there will. Um, We'll make that final answer inside the logarithm after you solve for everything through separable differential equation um, to always be positive. Um, okay, any questions on what we've got here? No. 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 It's fine. Okay. Um, let's try one more, and um, I'm going to call on you guys a little bit more for this one. Um, so I've got x to the fourth power over x squared plus one. Um, my power is bigger on top than on bottom, so what do I have to do? Uh, hang on. A long division. Long division. Um, so this is... I am dividing the numerator by the denominator. Um, what's the first number that I should have up here? X, x square x squared x squared x squared perfect um what is x squared times x squared plus one x x uh, to the fourth power uh, plus x squared Wait. perfect um so i'm going to subtract x to the fourth power plus x squared from our original problem and that'll leave me with negative x squared okay um what could i multiply x squared by to get negative x squared Negative 1. Negative 1. Okay, so I've got negative 1. If I multiply negative 1 times x squared plus 1, I'll get negative x squared minus 1. So if I subtract negative x squared minus 1 from negative x squared, I'll get 1. Um, so my final answer, I'm going to move this remainder, plus 1 over x squared plus 1. Our final answer is x squared minus 1, plus 1 over x squared plus 1. Um, any questions on our long division? Nope. No. Oh, you no. seemed really good at that. Okay, so now I've got to integrate. Um, so our integral of this whole thing um, is equal to the integral of x squared um, in terms of x minus the integral of 1 in terms of x plus the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 in terms of x. Okay, so when I substituted for, um, when I divided this out, um, I still had this dx that I was multiplying everything by. Um, so I've gone and I've, uh, I've distributed the dx into everything here, um, just so that I can see it for my integrals after I break them apart. Um, okay, so the only one that looks a little bit different is this one on the right side. Um, the integral of dx over x squared plus 1. Um, so this is actually an inverse trig function. Um, Sam or hong -An, do you remember um, which inverse trig function this would be? Te uh, second tangent. Uh, which one? Arc yeah. secant or arc tangent? Uh, arc, arc, arc tangent. Arc tangent, right. Okay, so if I integrate these, this will be x cubed over 3 minus x plus the arc tangent of x plus c. Um, any questions on what we did? Uh, nope. No. Nope. Okay. Um, Nathan, um, I'm not sure how far you are with the class that you're doing, um, but I can send you formula sheets for all the inverse functions after this if you want. <laughs> Oh okay, um, I, I I did this on um, on on the edge x already. Okay, awesome. So you're all cut up. <laughs> all 
All right, um, so that's long division. Um, after we break everything apart, then you'll be looking for any of your other integration techniques to solve for that remainder. Um, everything that you're able to pull out, you'll be able to integrate directly. Um, so I've got about 18 minutes left. I think we've got time for maybe one more technique. Um, so I'm going to look at completing a square. Um, so possibly last one for today. Um, uh, occasionally, completing a square will help us um, to match what we have um, for our u and u prime. Um, if I make a u substitution for the inside function, then I have to have a u prime on top. Um, so right now, um, if I did a direct u substitution for this, if u was equal to 2x minus x squared, then my u prime would have to be uh, 2 minus 2x. And I don't have that um, on top. I don't have the right power of x. Um, if I just had 2, then I could fool around to make my numerator equal to 2 by multiplying by 2 and by 1 half, which wouldn't change my original problem. But that 2x is giving us a problem uh, because I can't divide by x um, on the outside and still integrate. I can't pull out a function. I can only pull out constants. Um, so we can complete a square um, any time that um, our u ends up being... Um, Anytime that we end up having a power difference um, where half of our u um, minus 1 for your power is what we have on top. So right now I had x squared for my u. Um, half of that is x to the first power. Minus 1 is x to the 0 power, which is what I have for my tops. Um, so my q that I can complete a square or that I can use an inverse trig function to solve this um, is I've got one less than half of my power for u on top. Um, so here's what it looks like. Um, if I completed a square for the bottom here, I would pull out a negative 1, um, so that gives me positive powers to work with for x squared minus 2x. Um, and then to complete a square, I would divide, by, uh, divide b by 2 and square it to tell me what I would need to get a perfect square out of this. So negative 2 divided by 2 is 1, squared is 1. So this is x squared minus 2x plus 1. Um, but if I'm adding 1 here, I also have to subtract 1 because I can't change the original problem. Okay, so I still have not changed the original problem here. Um, but we have turned this into a perfect square. Um, any questions on what I did here? Um, no. Is this just making it to the quadratic form? Yes. Um, so if you have ax squared plus bx, to find the c that will give you a perfect square, um, if you add b uh, divided by 2 squared, you'll get a perfect square such that... So uh, c will be the b, b over 2 squared, right? So if your a is 1, you'll have a perfect square that looks like this. Okay. Okay. Um, so what I just did was I figured out what the plus c was that I would have to have in order to get this perfect square. Um, so if I divide b, that's negative 2, by 2, I'll get negative 1. And then if I square that, I get positive 1. So I have to add 1 in order to get a perfect square. But I can't change the original problem, so if I'm adding 1, I also have to subtract 1 here. Okay, so I added 1 and I subtracted 1, which does not change the original problem, but that does give us a perfect square here. Um, x squared minus 2x plus 1, if I factor, is x minus 1 squared. Okay, now I'm going to uh, redistribute my plus 1, or my negative 1 in here. Um, so that'll give me negative 1 times x minus 1 squared is negative x minus 1 squared, and negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Um, so I have 1 minus x minus 1 squared. Then if I do a u substitution now, my u will be x minus 1, and my u prime will be dx, which is the right power for what I need on top. Okay, so my new function is du over root 1 minus u squared. 
Okay, um, which arc trig function does this look like? Uh, arc second. Close. So arc secant is um, the integral of. Oh, this is arc second. Uh, right. U prime over uh -huh. U root U squared minus A squared um, is 1 over A arc secant of U over A plus C. Um, this one is. arc sine. Uh, my general form for arc sine is the arc sine of u over a plus c is equal to the integral of u prime over the square root of a squared minus u squared. Um, so for us, our a is 1. Um, so this will give us the arc sine of u over 1 plus c. And then we can resubstitute for u. Our u is x minus 1. Um, so mm -hmm. my final answer is the arc sine of x plus one or x minus one. Sorry, um, plus c. Um, any questions on what we did? Let's zoom out so nope. we can see the whole thing. Uh, Sam Hongen, um, you guys okay? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, you over. But why don't we have to do? So we don't have to follow the formula, but just substitute for the u, right? Um, our a was 1. Oh, um, it was 1. Okay. Great. Um, so if my a is 1, then this will be the arc sine of u over 1, which is u. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, is treating this as a uh, negative um, 1 half exponent going to, um, going to work? Um, unfortunately not. Um, the reason why is because if you substitute for the whole inside, you've got u to the second power, so I need a u to the first power on top. Um, if you had u du on top, then that's what we would do, um, because I would have the I'd have the right power to substitute here. Oh, um, okay. But because we don't have the right power to substitute, I have to use an um, an inverse trig function <coughs> to substitute. Okay, um, so that's completing a square. I think I've um, I've come up with two of these that we can try. Um, so if we jump back to the student note sheet. Um, right underneath those long division problems, I've got two new ones for completing a square. So we'll give those a shot. Um, okay, first one. Um, so I've got the integral of dx over the square root of 34 minus 4x minus x squared. Uh, excuse me for a minute. Okay. <coughs> um, so I'm going to rewrite this so that we can complete a square. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is, um, personally I like to pull out the negative ones um, because it's easier for me to figure out what's happening when I factor um, if things are positive. Um, and it saves me from making minor mistakes with my subtraction signs later on. So if I did pull out this negative one, I'll be left with x squared plus 4x minus 34. Um, then I'm going to complete the square on this inside part. So um, that leaves me with OK, for this inside part, I had x squared plus 4x minus 34. Um, what would I need to um, add to x squared plus 4x in order to get a perfect square? Awesome. Is it 4? Yes. Um, so I would take b divided by 2 and square it. My b is 4, so 4 divided by 2 is 2, squared is 4. Um, so I have to add 4, but I don't want to change the original problem, so I also have to subtract 4. Okay, so this part is my perfect square. And this part is uh, constants, so then I'm going to leave separate. Uh, 
uh, everything else. Okay, so I'm gonna um, get my perfect square then. So this is dx over the square root of negative one times. Um, if I factor this, what will I get? X plus two square. X plus two squared minus 38. Okay, then I'm going to distribute my negative 1. Um, so this will leave me with the integral of dx over the square root of 38 minus x plus 2 squared. Okay. Um, and then we're ready for a u substitution. Um, so what would my u be now? Um, x plus 2 u is x plus 2, that means my u prime is what? Uh, dx. dx, perfect. I think it's the first time you give me dx instead of just 1 without me prompting you. <laughs> okay, so um, if I make that substitution, um, I'll have this uh, u prime over the square root of 38 minus u squared. Um, I can also substitute for the 38, actually, since our formula has a's. Um, so if this has to be a squared, then a needs to be the square root of 38. So now I can substitute that as a squared. Um, OK, so which of our arc uh, trig functions is this one? Is it arc sine again? Yep, this one's arc sine again. Um, so this should be equal to 1 over a times the arc sine of u over a plus c. Um, so I'm going to resubstitute everything. Um, so this is um, 1 over a, 1 over root 38, times the arc sine of u over a. That's x plus 2 over root 38 plus C. Um, so College Board on their um, SATs and the AP exams, um, for the multiple choices, um, they don't like to have radicals in the bottom of a fraction. Um, so I can rationalize these. Um, if this was a multiple choice question, um, you would have to match to something like this, the square root of 38 over 38. Um, arc sine of x root 38 plus 2 root 38 over 38 plus c. Um, however, if this is a free response, um, you do not have to rationalize on your free response in order to get full credit. Um, as long as your answer is correct, they'll take it. Um, so if this is a free response question, I would leave it like this. Um, because you can lose your answer point um, if you don't um, rationalize correctly. But if this is a multiple choice, then keep going so you can match it to your multiple choice. Okay. Okay. Um, any questions on anything from this one? Um, no. Uh, no. <coughs> no. Okay. Uh, we have five minutes. I think it's time for one last problem. Um, so we'll do one more completing a square. Um, so you'll notice this one looks a little bit different. Um, my powers on bottom um, are largest is to the fourth power. If I tried to make a direct u substitution, so u is equal to 21 minus 4x squared minus x to the fourth power, then my u prime would be negative 8x dx minus 4x to the third power dx. Um, which is not what I have on top. Um, my clue that I need to use completing a square or some sort of um, inverse trig function to solve this is that x to the fourth power, um, if I uh, half it, will be x to the second, and then subtract one is x to the first power, which is what I have on top. Um, if I'm able to make this into a perfect square, 
Um, that will allow me to, um, instead of have x to the fourth power, I'll have x squared plus something squared. So my new u uh, would be x squared, and my u prime would be x to the first power um, plus some sort of constant, um, which is what I have on top. Um, so I know I need to complete a square. Okay, so if I am completing a square, um, I'll rewrite this. Um, I'm going to pull my... Actually, I'll leave this on top just in case we end up with 2x dx exactly, but if we don't, then I'll end up pulling that 2 on the outside once we're ready for it. So this will be 2x dx over the square root of... Um, I'm going to pull out a negative 1. So this will be negative 1 times x to the fourth power plus 4x squared minus 21. Okay. Um, what would I need um, in order to get a perfect square out of this x to the fourth plus 4x squared? Uh, 4. I would need to add 4 again. So this will be 2x mm -hmm. dx. Just integral. There we go. <coughs> uh, integral of 2x dx. There we go. Um, times the square root mm -hmm. of negative 1 x to the fourth plus 4x squared plus 4 minus 4 minus 21. Okay, I've added 4 and subtracted 4 because I don't want to change the original problem. Um, so that gives me a perfect square here. Um, x to the fourth plus 4x plus 4. Um, if I factor this, what will I get? Oh. Uh. X squared plus seven. Uh, X squared. Um, just factoring this part. Um, oh, that part. Yep. X squared plus two. Perfect. X squared plus two squared. Um, so that's my perfect square. Um, it's going to give me the same factors for both of them. Um, and then on the outside, I've got minus 4 minus 21 is minus 25. Okay, then I'm going to redistribute this negative 1 into both my terms. So this will give me the integral of 2x dx over the square root of positive 25 minus x squared plus 2 squared. Okay, now if I do a u substitution, I'll have the right power on top. Um, so I think, uh, I haven't heard from Nathan in a while. So um, Nathan, if I make a substitution here, what is u and what is u prime? Um, u is um, x squared plus u, and u prime is um, 2x dx. 2x dx, perfect. Um, I also need um, an a, if I'm going to substitute into my formula for the arc trig function. Um, what is my a? Um, 25. Close. Uh, in my formula, I've got a squared, so what should a be? Oh, um, 5. 5, perfect. Okay, so I can re-substitute now. This is the integral of u prime over the square root of a squared minus u squared. Um, okay, um, which arc trig function is this? Hold again. Arc sine again. Arc sine again, yeah. So um, this should end up equaling... Um, the inverse mm. sine of u over a plus c. Um, and then I'm going to resubstitute. u is x squared plus 2 and a is 5. So my final answer is the arc sine of. Oops, what was that? x squared plus 2. X squared plus. Over 5 plus c. Plus. All right. Um, we are one minute over time. We covered a lot today. Um, any questions on anything? No. Uh, no. I'm um, does the, oh, oh. Um, does the like the two x always um cancel out? Um, if it does not, um, so let's say if we had four x on top instead, um, I can pull out a constant two that I'm not using and then substitute for the two x. Um, if this was two uh, x plus five on top, I can split the fraction, so I'll have uh. 
2x over the square root of everything we had under the square root plus a separate integral for uh, 5 over everything that was on the bottom. And we'll have to do something else for that separate integral. Oh, okay. Um, I might try to start class with one of those ne tomorrow. <laughs> um, if I can come up with one in, one in time. Okay, thank you guys so much for coming. Right. I know this is still Chinese New Year for us, and we are past midnight. Uh, so you guys did great, especially considering how late it is. Um, I'll see any of you who want to show up tomorrow. Okay, um, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year.